Hello Antwerps, welcome to Let's Electronics Kits, which is a working title that I've just made up. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the start of what I hope will be another mini-series where I buy various electronics hobbyist kits off of eBay and the internet and I build them. And there's no real reason or rhyme, I'm, you know, I'm not reviewing them per se, I don't know enough about electronics engineering to do such things. Uh, it's just because I like making them. Uh, you may remember that a while back for a subscriber special I did the 8x8x8 LED cube. Um, and I really enjoyed building it and I wanted to build more kits like that. So um, uh, I'm just going to start buying these kits because they're really cheap. They're like, you know, ten, uh, they're, they're anywhere between five and 20 pounds on eBay. Um, so we're gonna buy lots of them. And if you spot any that you think look cool, then by all means, drop me a message, put it in the comments or something like that. And I'll buy one and I'll build it because I think they're cool. So anyway, uh, the video itself, uh, apologies in advance for the quality of this one. Uh, I live streamed this build, uh, this build video because I've been experimenting with how viable it is for me to live stream um, certain videos uh, where I just want to, you know, just sit in and have and just enjoy talking to people online and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I was not very well prepared for this video and I didn't get a local recording of it. Therefore, this edited video is actually an edit of the download of the live stream, which is why the quality is crappy. So apologies about that in advance. The other problem with this one as well is what I hadn't realized at the time recording was that I was very, very tired. So uh, if I seem extremely dense trying to read the instructions on this kit, that's why. Um, so much so that uh, toward the end of the, the session, when I was uh, actually um, setting up and uh, testing the device, um, I've, I'm actually going to re-record that section and do a demonstration for you post-recording because trying to watch me figure out how to use this thing is quite painful. Uh, especially for me because the next morning I walked in and just had it all down. So yeah, pro tip kids, don't get too tired when you're working. It doesn't work very well. Anyway, please enjoy the video. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Right, what I've got here I've got an oscilloscope kit, which I bought. So this is a DIY oscilloscope. I'm trying to see if there's a picture of the finished product anywhere here that I can show you so you guys can see what I'm actually trying to make. But um, no, I don't think there is. Um, there's something anyway. So yeah, basically this is an oscilloscope kit. So it's an electronics kit. We've got a, a load of components and a couple of circuit boards uh, that we're gonna build into this tiny little midget oscilloscope that I can use for various electronic stuff, which should be kind of fun, because uh, I want to get an electronic, uh, yeah, I want an oscilloscope um, for various electronic measurements. You can use oscilloscopes similar to a multimeter in electronics. However, a multimeter shows you readings at a particular time, but an oscilloscope will show you readings over time. It will give you a graph, so it can show you voltage uh, and, um, and frequency changes and plot them on a graph so you can you can see signals in real time and stuff like that. There's a lot of funky stuff you can do with an oscilloscope. Um, however, good ones are quite expensive. So I bought this cheap kit so I can have a play with one before I actually spend any big money on one. Right, so let's have a look through what we've got. All right, so we've got a couple of circuit boards there. A lot of the hard stuff, the uh, surface mount stuff, is already done on this. So this is just going to be a matter of just soldering all of these bits on. However, very unhelpfully, all of these components have come completely unsorted. So I think part of the fun is going to be figuring out exactly what I've got here. Right, so we've got, I think that is, yeah, we've got two boards here. So that's our main circuit board. And oh, we've already got the DC jack soldered on. We might have to hotwire some leads to this because I don't have a, uh, a jack for that. I'm trying to figure out where to start. Oh, there we go. So step one, step two, step three, four, five. Okay, so this is a two page thing. So let's put page two to one side. Let's start with page one. Right, let's sort out all these bits we've got. So buttons, 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 BNC connector, uh, a dialy twiddly knob thing. Cover for the dialy twiddly knob thing. A slider switch. With a couple of positions. Uh, a jumper connector. Loads of resistors, another slider. That one's different, good. So it should be easy to figure out which one to use. 
Another small subboard, some kind of switchboard. Another jumper connector, some caps. Are these the same? 100 picofarad, 16 volt. 100 picofarad, 16 volt. 100 picofarad, 16 volt. Nanofarad, sorry. Or UF. I can't remember what, it, I can't remember what the UF one is. It's micro, I think, actually. Right, that's a screw. You don't need that right now. Yeah, I was expecting the instructions to be more helpful than they actually are. So, <laughs> on the other hand, if the instructions had been clear, I probably would have been done in a very short amount of time because uh, I'm fairly apt at soldering. So once I know where everything goes, this thing will go together really quickly. However, I think the bigger part of this is going to be figuring out where all the bits go. Okay, we've got to figure out these resistors. No, they're not going to help me. Okay, I think we're going to have to just put on all the big bits, the big obvious bits, and go from there. So, um, let's just sort through these resistors first. So, I'm not very good at measuring resistor values, so we're going to have to look up a table or something. Or actually, I can probably just multimeter them all, which will be a lot easier. Uh, actually, multimetering them is, a, is the most obvious solution here. I'm just going to see if I can figure out... Uh, this is going to take forever to do it by the values. We're just going to multimeter all of these, I think. Just sort them all out from each other. Yeah, we'll come back to those resistors. That's going to suck. I'm kind of annoyed that they haven't actually given me a simple parts list. One, two, three, four. Um, because that's going to make my life extremely difficult. We can do this, though. We gonna do it. Let's start up the soldering iron. Uh, on. And let's have... 380 degrees, I think, because we don't need any more than that. Okay, right. Well, we may as well start. What do we got? We got three boards. So, what the hell goes on this one? Oh, there it is. It goes there. Rotary encoder board. Okay. So, that, I think. So, this is our rotary encoder. This is a switch that just keeps going round and round, and probably, yeah, it clicks in as well. So this turn this turns with clicks and presses in. So that dude is going to go on this. So we've got to straighten those legs out a bit because they've gotten a bit bent in the packaging. It might just go straight in, actually. Uh, it's going to need a little bit of work. So that's going to go on there. It's a question of which way around it goes now. So let's check out that picture again. Where did I find it? found it over here. So the logo is on the back of the board. There's the logo. So that means the switch goes on this side. So let's bend these bits in. And then that, those will all need to be soldered. And then we've got a four pin jumper. There's the four pin jumper, which also goes through. So that goes in like that. I'm going to put that there and I'm going to bend those legs out slightly to hold it in place. Maybe anyway. No, that's not going to happen. We're going to have to, uh, let's just uh, sit that upright for a moment. Uh, is my frame rate tanking? I think it is, isn't it? Right, there we go. I think we're all fine now. That's our rotary encoder. So that is that small subboard there and that has got everything on it good okay that's going to go on like that then right fine that's our encoder board so then we've got the large one and then where's the analog board there's our finished analog board okay let's start working on this guy the smaller one first so that's this dude move all these sodding resistors out of the way uh, those things, oh, these things are going to be horrible. I'm going to have to go through those one by one with a multimeter. What a pain. Okay, so let's put that to one side. Actually, let's quickly solder this because I'm confident that this is correct. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little bit of flux to glue the jumper pins in place like that. There we go. And let's get to soldering.
Right, that's the anchor points done. So it's not gonna fall out. Right, I definitely need to adjust my setup here. So we're gonna grab, we're gonna grab my vise and I'm going to put this in the vise because I can't work balancing like that. And also if we put it in the vise, we should be able to give you guys a better view. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. Okay. There we go. That's our rotary encoder all soldered up. So that is going to have this guy on it. So on the outside of it, I'll have this little twiddler dial knob that also clicks in. Nice. All right, next board, that's this guy. Right, so we've got some capacitors, some resistors, the jumper, so that's obviously, that's gonna be this fella. You're gonna go in there. And according to the picture, that does point upwards as well, you can see it on the board. And I can see our three larger capacitors go in there as well. In fact, from this picture, we can figure out quite a lot. We can see we've got the small ceramic caps there, the larger ceramic cap behind the switch. I think I can pick and place a lot of this just from the picture without needing to know the values. Um, so let's get, we'll put that in place because that's something that I can solder in and then um, put in the vise to hold it all in place. So once again, I'm gonna use a little bit of flux to hold that in place. The flux is supposed to be to help me solder, but in this instance, it's uh, a nice temporary glue. Come on, sit flat. Okay, here we go. And I think that's a bridge, let's get rid of you. And you're a bridge, let's get rid of you. Looks good, on to the next bit. Hello George, how are you? I'm glad to see you've come to support me. <laughs> this kit is awful, George. All I have is pictures. I've got nothing to go on here. It doesn't actually tell me, like, we've. It's numbered all of the components, like R1, R2, R3, and so on. Ah! But it doesn't tell me what measurement any of the resistors are. All right, these things are gonna be wonky as hell the first time I solder them. But once I've got some solder on there, we'll straighten everything up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hey, get on there, there we go. New wavy looking boy. Get still, there we go. And now, I'm gonna put my thumb underneath the board, pressing the capacitor into the back of the board. and then touch them up. And now, as you can see, our first guy is dead flat on the board. And repeat with the other ones. That's not straight. There we go. That felt right. Feels good, man. Now as, oh, whoa, what? What is that? That's not remotely straight. We're taking a second pass at that, dude. Now 
That's more like it. All right, let's trim those legs. I really should get some helping hands, you're right. I don't, yeah, yeah. I probably will, because um, I was gonna say I don't do this often enough to warrant it, but I'm planning on doing more of these projects. Like, I normally don't buy many of them because I'm like, oh, I could build that, but what would I use it for? But I just like making them, to be honest. So, then there were capacitors. All right, what's next? Uh, ceramic capacitors. All right, that one says 151. Oh, you're kidding. That one says 331. They're all different. And that one says one. Wow. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I may have just found the, the part of the instructions that tell me what everything is. I am approximately a bad. Right. So here we actually have on the instructions. There we go. So C1 is a 1UF. C2 is a 330PF. And so on. So uh, yeah, that's our guide. Now we know what we're actually doing here. So the 331, the 331, that's gonna be our 330, 330 puff. Uh, so that is C2. So let's put that there as number two. Uh, then we've got 151, that must be the 150. So that's gonna be C6, I think. So I'll put that up the end. And the one, well that surely must be the one PF. So that's gonna be capacitor four. So you're gonna go there. And then we got this dude down here, who's, oh he is labeled 104. That's a 104. Uh, I have no idea what that's supposed to be, a 104. Which ones have we already fitted? We fitted C10, 11, and eight. So in the picture, C1 is the larger one. So I'm guessing that this is the, uh, the 0.1 UF, because the picture of the finished board, meh, shows a fairly large capacitor behind the switch. So that guy there. So I think I've got C1 here. So let's put him in. Eh. Good job, Graham. All right, let's get him soldered in. C2, the 330. That was an easy one. We have one that was labeled 331. So I'm going with him for the 330. That's our best bet. See, the problem is if I bend them at right angles, it's gonna be really hard to trim off the excess. Let's try it though. My solder spool jammed up. Okay. Yep. Yep. Let's go C4 and C6. So we've got the 1PF and the 150. Oh, and I've got a 1PF and I've got a, a 151, which I'm assuming is the 150. I'm not quite sure why it's 151 and not 150, but given the information I have, that seems close enough. Right, so C1, C4, sorry, is the 1PF. In you go. And then C6. In you go. Get out of here. Right, how do they look? Oh, you're a bit wonky. We're going to straighten that one out. That's possible though. Yeah, that was Flux Boy, who needs straightening out. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly do this by hand.
Oops. That's more like it. All right, uh, let's put, um, uh, it's really tempting to put on like the big things like the BNC connector and stuff. However, I know from past experience that you're better off leaving those until, until last because once you've got those big ass connectors on the board, they get in the way. So let's move on to the next parts of this board. We can put the switch on it though. Right, so we've got two, there's two slide switches in my inventory. Let's see which one fits. So we've got this guy here who's got six legs, and then, oh, there we go. This guy here has got six plus two. So that's gonna be our dude. And that does go on that side of the board. Those legs straight, yeah, they are. Now, oh, this guy's going to get in the way every time I've got it in the vice. There, that's more like it. Here we go. Right, anchor points. We're going to flux these because that's not taken properly. There we go. Okay, here we go. Redo that one. There we go. And reflow. Remove the bridge. Reflow. Reflow. Beautiful. Oh, come on. That ground is not. There we go. What's next then? I think we've got to start doing these resistors, which I'm not looking forward to, but they've got to be done. We just got to do the resistors then, and then with uh, the resistors, the BNC connector, and then we're done with the analog board. Okay, let's do it. Right, so we're going to have to figure out these sodding resistors now. So let's put you backwards a little bit. Adjust focus. And now comes the multimeter. I think my next project that I'm going to buy, ow is you can buy for like seven quid on eBay, a little parts tester board. And it's like a circuit board where you just plug in any part and it automatically detects what you've got. So we want resistance mode. And let's figure out what we got. So, right, that's a 3K. That's a very obvious 3K which is R13, R13, three kilo ohms. Right, so let's put him on the board. R13, done. Next guy. Three hundred ohms. 300 ohms is R7, 300 ohms. Oh man, I'm not doing the color codes, George. You can do the color codes. I'm gonna use a goddamn multimeter. <laughs> yeah. My eyes aren't high enough res. <laughs> uh, 11K. Eleven K R four. Eh. Ninety ohms. We've got a ninety one on the list for R nine. R nine. Fifteen ohms, really? Yep, that's R eleven and R twelve for just fifteen ohms. That must be a pull-up resistor or something. Uh, what did I say? Eleven and twelve. Start with eleven. One K. 
Uh, yep, that's R5, 6, and 14. So let's go R5. That's another 1K. That's R6. I have to admit, this is rather more fun having to figure it out, which is not to say it makes the kit any better. It just means that this is slightly more fun than just simply placing them on the board. And there's our third 1K. So that's R14. R14. Five oh nine K. Uh yeah, we got a five ten K, that's R one. Five ten for R one. One fifty. Uh that's R eight and R sixteen. I think we've got R eight already. All right, 130, uh, yep, yeah, that's R15, <laughs> making me R irate, uh, what did I say, R15 for 130, no, I dropped my probes, R15, 150, Come on, yep, 150. Uh, that's R16. We're running out of resistors, boys. We're nearly done. And we can get back to the soldering. This was why they said I needed a multimeter to do this. Unless you want to be MLG Pro and read color codes. I was taught how to do that in school. But in school, the resistors were twice the size of these. Uh, right. Next one, 1 1.2 mega ohms. 1.2 mega ohms is R3. R3. R3 is resisting being placed into the board. Stop resisting resistor number three. Thank you. Uh, when you're sorting your capacitors, George, you can do it by color code. And so help me if you say you might not always have a multimeter on hand, like they told us we wouldn't always have calculators, I'm going to be salty. <laughs> 15 ohms. Uh, R11 and R12. R11 and R12. Shit, <laughs> how else do you impress the girls? <laughs> hey girl, I'll look up your resistance. Or something, I don't know. 30 ohms. R10. R10. So the only one we're missing is R2, which is going to be our phantom resistor, the first one we looked up, where I was like, oh, I don't know what that is. So R2 is missing. So R2 is supposed to be 5.1 mega ohms. So let's do another check on this boy. Oh, there we go. I saw five for a moment there. Let's try that one more time. This is pretty high resistance, so I think that's why I'm having issues. Let's just try and get this a bit more firmer in the probes. The problem is, it's, the multimeter is probably finding less resistance through my hands than through the resistor, which is why I'm having trouble with it. I just want to see that 5 mega ohms just to be certain. Let's try that. There we go. 5.6. We're reading high, but it's five, that mega ohms is a lot of ohms. so. That could be anything. It's probably the fact that I've got a cheap as crap multimeter here. Although recently I discovered that cheap multimeters are not necessarily the worst. They're fine for electronics, just don't ever use a cheap multimeter for high voltage stuff. 
Like this thing is uh, rated cat two for a thousand volts. Don't ever plug this thing into a thousand volts. Because if something goes wrong, it's gonna beep at me like that. If something goes wrong, it's gonna bloody melt. All right, that's all our resistors. Let's do some soldering. Should be green, brown, black, green. One sec. Uh, let's go for the let's go for the super zoom. Here we go. Green, brown, black, green. Yeah. And then that brown ring on the end is probably the tolerance. That looks like green, brown, black, green to me though. So yes, good job. One percent tolerance. Nice. I thought they used to be silver and gold, unless that's supposed to be gold. Whatever. All right, soldering time, boys. Yep. One percent is brown. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. So it was uh, so it was green, brown, black, green, and then brown for the one percent. Damn, those are some low tolerances. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, the soldering iron is still up on up to temperature. Here we go. Because I'm a scrub lord and I don't have an extractor fan, I'm trying to steadily blow at the site while I solder. So I don't breathe in these uh, 30 year old solder fumes. The solder I'm using is archaic and it's probably filled with lead, magnesium, well, lead, lead, and other lead-like substances that would give me uh, uh, butt cancer or something. Part of me is tempted to turn the temperature up just a scooch, but generally you shouldn't use more heat in your soldering iron than you need. All right, bam, 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 bam. I think we've got everyone. Let's snip some leads. That all looks good. I'm just going to reflow all of those just to make sure that the joints are all nice. Get out of here, bridge. There we go. Good. I'm happy. Look at all them resistors. This board's looking mostly done now. I think we need the BNC connector. I think we need the BNC connector and then I think we're done with the analog board. Let's check the instructions. Uh, okay, right, resistors, ceramic capacitors, the slide switch, electrolytic capacitors, BNC connector, uh, pin header, and then the analog board is done. All right, BNC connector, let's do it. So how the hell am I going to mount this so I can mount the BNC connector? I think we're going to try and... Right, the BNC connector is this big ass dude here. Right. And that just goes in there. That needs to bend out slightly. And then I'm going to need to take it out because it's got a solder on the other side anyway. Ah, uh, you annoying... Okay, fine. Okay. Right, now these anchors are probably going to take a bit of heat, so let's see how well this goes. Oh wow, look at that. That's what it looks like when you don't have enough heat. You see how that solder is not flowing. Right, let's dial up more 
we're going up to, we were at 380 degrees, we're going up to 450, and we're gonna get some flux on those boys. Right, are we ready? We're ready, here we go. Round two. There we go. All around, please. That'll do. One BNC connector. Now, can my cutters actually do that? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wreck my good cutters on that. Where's my crap cutters? These ones are already blunt as hell. There we go. Skadoosh. Analog board. Done. Okay, so our analog board is done. Let's do our digital board, our main board. All right, now I can turn that over without bits flapping about. Right, okay, so in the picture, that's J8, which yes, was up the top. So that dude is gonna go in there. So let's put him in there and then bend downwards. Oh, let's not do that in the board. I'm just gonna break that off. Let's uh, clamp that up. Like that, there we go. Just solder up one terminal, like that. And then, I'll just use my finger to pivot that up. Ow, there we go. All the heat went straight through to that spade then. There we go. That's not super flat, but I think it'll do. That should be good enough. Whoops, got to be careful not to bend the LCD. Okay. Test signal terminal is done. Uh, power connector, optional. Well, we have a power connector, so we'll put it on there. Um, so that goes next to the DGND bit. Let's turn it over and have a look. There, that goes there. Cool, so again, I'm going to use flux to temporarily glue bits in place. Done. Cool. And what's next? Number four, slide switch. So that's our on-off switch. That's going to go in there. Easy one. Flux. And switch. Whoop. Oh, come on. There we go. Is that flat? I think it is. It'll do. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's our anchors. And we'll check that it's flat. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. It's as flat as it can be. We, ha we don't exactly have top-notch quality components on this thing, so... <laughs> Done and reflow. Beautiful. Power switch done. All right, what's next? Uh, pin header, mail. Four pin, pin header. I remember seeing that earlier on. Uh-oh. Uh 
Oh wait, I know what that is. That's on my um, that's on my uh, my tactile switchboard here. I did this earlier on. So this is the 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 twiddle knob thing. So it goes chicka chicka chicka, and it presses in and stuff. There's our four pin header already on that. So uh, okay, we'll come back to that one because that's going to go on last, I believe. Right, let's put on a big buttons then. In that case, our tact switches, the tactical switches. So just. All right, so solder, here we go. I'm just gonna put some spots of flux on these holes. And we'll get our tactile switches in. These are big tactile switches, these big clicky buttons. These would probably hold themselves in without the flux, to be honest, but. Oh. Hmm, can the, can the microphone hear that? Hmm, clicky, clicky. Right, soldering. Let's do it. <sighs> There we go. Check all of those. That one looks a bit dodgy. Hello. Tactile switch is done. All right. Remove resistor R30. All right. Um, okay. R30 is used to bypass switch five, so the main board can be tested without the power switch. Well, we have a power switch now, so where is where is R30? Probably going to be down near the switch somewhere. R30, there he is. You've got to go. Uh, R, oh, really? Mm, all right, let's see if we can just bust this guy off. Fuck you. There we go. Whoops. R30 is gone. Okay, uh, right, so that is the main board assembled and I have run out of components. So now we've just got to put everything together. So, right, so let's go back to page two of the destructions. Eh. All right, uh, solder the rotary encoder, done. Assemble the front module. Cool, that's all in place. And I put a fingerprint on the screen already. Good job. Right, uh, so that's in the same orientation as in the instructions. Okay, right, mount the rotary encoder board to the front plate with the screws and solder the board. Oh, weak. I've done this in the wrong order. Because I need to put that in there and then how am I gonna solder that together? Weak. Okay. What's the best way around this? I could desolder it off of this board and undo some of my work. I might do that. I think that's what I'm going to do. That seems to pose the least risk to breaking anything. That's a, that's fine. We can deal with that. So that's soldered on the back of the board. So now we can go back into the front panel assembly. And now when I push that through, that's going to go in there. Whoops, on camera, please. So that's going to go into there. And then those are going to go through that. Oh, that hole's not quite clear. Is that our problem child again? Don't make me solder you. Yeah, there we go. So that sits on there, and it pokes through there. Cool. So we'll put some screws into that, and then we'll solder it in place. So let's check out my screw selector armor.
That seems to be okay. Let's solder those up. That was horrifying. Let's take out all of that excess solder I just put in there and add a little bit. There we go. That's all good. Attach the analog board to the main board by mating J2 to J4. J2 to J4. Done. Okay. Apply 9 volts DC power supply to J7 or J6 to the main board. All right, so we've got to get power onto this thing. Uh, right, now I don't have a jack for that. Or do I? Uh, no, I don't have a jack that I'm willing to use. Duh, 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 duh. So we're going to hotwire this. So, um, there we go. All right, so short is ground, long is positive. Let's do this. I am ready. Soldering iron's off again. One more time. Short is the ground. Okay, so we're connected up to our DC power supply and we are turning on. Here we go. Bam. Ah! It's doing something. Hmm. Okay, right. We have a picture on the display. Right, well, that was a mission. Um, just to keep this video down to a sane length, we're going to break off the calibrating and testing section into another episode. So uh, go ahead and click the link that may or may not appear at some position on this screen, depending on when this video goes out. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much and goodbye.